and welcome to the second episode of the Hughes Musings podcast. Uh, my name is John. And I'm Carol. And we are the Hugheses and this is Hughes's Musings. <laughs> so welcome. We just want to say thank you to everyone who listened to our first episode last week. You know, it gave us a nice, warm, fuzzy feeling, didn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, so we were, we were expecting, you know, a handful of of people to listen to it but last time i checked the view count between the website and youtube is sitting at 70 which is way way more than than we were expecting for our first one wasn't it yeah definitely so we really really appreciate that and uh anybody who's shared any of our posts or liked anything that we do or sort of encouraged any people that they know to listen thank you so much we really really do appreciate that carol what have you been up to this week? Well, this week, as you know, has been quite a challenging week for me yeah. um, mentally. Just supporting a friend um, who needs a bit of help this week. But it's nice to be to be looked at for you know that kind of support. So I'm I'm grateful that I'm there to help her. But I've also been on the early shift this week. Yeah. Which means the alarm has gone off at half past five. I know. <laughs> I know it has. <laughs> So going on the early shift, so I'm on rotation at work for shifts. So, you know, they go up in increments, you know, seven, half seven, etc. But be going in at seven, you are the opener. So you've got to hit that ground running when you go in. As soon as you go in, you've got to get breakfast ready, health and safety checks, everything like that before any of the children arrive. Normally you go in and you kind of warm up to, to your shift. You don't have such a high to-do list in the first half hour of walking in the door. Mm -hmm. So that's been quite challenging is to kind of wake up, get going. And then I finish at four. And I yeah, just... you've been saying that your days have gone pretty quickly because of it, though. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. So my lunch on an early shift is at half 11, which is very early. <laughs> but yeah, you finish at four. So you just walk out that door. You've got no, no to-do list at the end of the day. You walk out, you come home, and I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm ready for a nap. The thought of waiting until seven o'clock when you get home to have my dinner. No, you're <sighs> having to push yourself to get through, yeah. Yeah, sometimes I've been having a wee snack. I don't blame you. I mean, then, it's quite a long way from when you get home to when then I get home. Yeah, and we've not not really seen each other this um, that much this no, week. No, we've been a bit separate this week doing different yeah. things. So this is actually like the first opportunity we've had to sit down and talk properly, isn't it? Yeah, nice we've made this little little time to spend together. Absolutely. So how's your week been, John? You missing me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> was that was that even slightly convincing? No, I have. No. Of course, I've been missing you. It's really nice to see. you Although today. I bet it's been nice to sleep on that king size bed alone. It's been wonderful. I've been sleeping in the middle of the bed, <laughs> surrounded by a fort of pillows. <laughs> Unbelievable. And and two duvets that are like intertwined. It's amazing. Yeah. It's but apart from that, how, how's your week going? It's been good. Um, it's been a little bit difficult because it's been my first week back into work proper. Yeah, you were you were off a wee bit last week, weren't you? Yeah, so we had the holiday. I went in for a few days and I was back in work and then unfortunately as we as we said last week, we haven't been feeling very well, so I was off work for pretty much another week. Mm. Uh, so this has been my first week back into full shifts, full working pattern. So that's been quite difficult, but I'm getting there. It's been an adjustment period. Yeah. Um to get back into back the working into the pattern. Thing. So yeah. and there's quite a lot changing at work at the moment, so I've been having to concentrate a lot. Yeah, work. your job is a focusing job, isn't it? You've it is very focus. focused. You're constantly dealing with people's money, um, which is a big responsibility. So of I course. think that's something that we all take on in work. Mm -hmm. um, so by the end of the day, you can be quite tired and quite run down. There was one day in particular where I had a nightmarish headache and mm. I came home and I think... I struggled to even stay awake for a couple of hours and I think you uh was that was one of the nights that you were here in yeah. the flat before you went away and you cooked me dinner and I crawled to bed and that was it. <laughs> I was out and done. I think you were I slept, done. slept for about ten yeah, hours. I remember you were nagging me, I've got a headache. I was like, Take a pink colour. Like, no, no, but I've got a headache. <laughs> Take a pink <pain> colour. <laughs> <laughs> so annoyingly for Carol, I am one of those people who hates taking medication. Yeah. I will only take painkillers at the point of I cannot handle this anymore. Yeah, I can't function. Yeah. So when I had that headache, I knew that it was just because I was tired and run down and been scared, staring at the screen all day. I, I'd been concentrating all day. And yeah. all I really needed to do was sleep. So I was like, well, 
I'll get to a time where it feels like it's okay for me to sleep, yeah. i.e. about 10 o'clock. Yeah, because if you go to bed too early... You wake up too early. You No, well, I sleep all the way through, but you would wake up at like three in the morning, ready for the day to begin. Yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd end up watching TV, have another hour's sleep, and then that'd throw me out for yeah. you know, the rest of the week then. So yeah, I was just pushing myself to get through to that acceptable bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> and this week, because I've been on my own, i um, watched a lot of rugby. Yeah. Yeah, I've been watching the World Cup over in Japan. It's been amazing. And I've been watching the World Championship Athletics as well. I was going to say that. Well. Yeah, you, you were watching that the other day, weren't you? Yeah, it was it was amazing. It was, I, it's been years since I watched it. So I used to watch it with my mum all the time. Yeah. Uh, I always used to watch the athletics uh, with my mum. So that was great. Uh, it's been a lot of years since I've sat down and watched an entire championship. So <laughs> the World Championship has been really, really good this year. There's lots of... Uh, I always like the like the interesting stories and the, mm. the comeback kids and the, oh, yeah. the people that have come good after being so close for so many years. And, and I think BBC have been doing athletics coverage for so many years now. They've got it down to a fine art to, <laughs> to sell the drama before you get into the race. And it's just incredible. It's so yeah. good. You eat and, into it all, don't you? Absolutely. And <laughs> the rugby's been amazing. So I've watched uh, a lot of games and... Uh, been watching Japan. If anybody's been watching it, it's the the championship was over in Japan this year, and uh, Japan have kind of turned into the darlings of the rugby world um, because they weren't exactly highly tipped. I think four years ago they beat South Africa really unexpectedly, and it was like, oh, that's going to be the biggest win that they've had in mm. years. And, and going into this World Cup, Ireland have been ranked number one oh. uh, in the world because they've had a great pre-tournament. And they got beat by the Japanese. And it was just amazing to watch. <laughs> it was so good, though. Sorry if we've got any Irish listeners. I don't think we have. But but if we have, I, I do apologise. But it was. We in... have got some New Zealand listeners, though, haven't we? Apparently, yeah. <laughs> so we were looking on um, the geography of our listeners. And yeah. we've got people in Australia and New Zealand. So whoever you are, thank you very much. I have a small little inkling of who it might be. Yeah. And if it is, I really, really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was just incredible to watch. And then I watched him the other day against Samoa as well. And that was just amazing. So yeah, I've, I've watched a lot of the rugby. I've watched a lot of sports. I've had a, I've had a manly week. Yeah, and you've been fending for yourself. I've not been kicking for you every night. <laughs> no, so this is something that I definitely want, want to address. So on editing the podcast last week, I, I listened back to the conversation for the what's on your plate. And I found that it was definitely... Carol centric. <laughs> it sounded like from the conversation that we had that I just sit on the sofa every day with my knife and fork, banging them on the table like a toddler. That's not the case. I do cook quite a lot. So yeah, but, John's you know. style of cooking is like he really knows how things taste and what difference you can like say. Oh, that's missing garlic. Oh, it needs like he he knows. I don't know how to describe it, but you can like throw things together and you kind of know in your head how it's going to taste. Where if I mix things together, it's a genuine surprise how it's going to taste. Like, I really <laughs> can't predict it. So I have to follow a recipe. Yeah. Like, step by step. Measure it out. Like, I can't judge, oh, it needs a bit more salt or it needs a bit more of this or yeah. this is too strong or I can't. It's a, yeah, as I said, it's a genuine surprise. Yeah, when I'd things say work out, out of the two of us, if we were going to sort of label it or describe it in a certain way i'd say that i'm the cook and you're the baker yeah because like bakers follow instructions yeah they they have measurements their step by steps yeah. and their measurements and they have to do things in a certain order and that and, and they produce great food because yeah. they do it methodically yeah whereas like i'd say i'm a cook so a cook goes oh well i've got five ingredients i can throw this stuff together somehow i have enough knowledge to work out like oh i need to do this this and this you know yeah to be able to so, make a nice meal yeah so yeah. then that you know that's that's my style of cooking is just throwing things together adding a bit of herbs and spices and just sort of seeing how things yeah. work out and i have enough technical knowledge to be able to go well i know how this should work yeah i think i've there's certain parts of me where that's becoming more of a strength of mine i am now able to make certain meals without a recipe or if we're like oh that chicken needs cooked tonight and we've got a, a thing of passata i can kind of know what herbs and spices to add to yeah. make it you know tasty you know as with everything in our lives i think yeah. we uh 
got to a point where we balance each other out. Balance, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you have no problem baking. I'll make a cake. Yeah, you get a bit annoyed at the fizzle, the, the fiddle, fiddly little measurements. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I much yeah. prefer... You like, can bake and I can cook. Yeah, so. like, we're not inept at the others, <laughs> but our strengths lie where we were saying, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, like I said, I can make a cake. I know how to make a cake or something like that. Or, you know, if I needed to follow a recipe, I can do it. But can, yeah. I get frustrated and bored. It's not, not yeah, where see, what I want to be doing. If the recipe said, like three quarters of an onion i will put three quarters of an onion in john would just put the whole onion in like that's the difference you'd be like close enough i'm not chopping three quarters of an onion i'll shove it all in whereas i'll be like no recipe calls for three quarters of an onion yeah i just <laughs> I, i'd just pick a smaller onion so like... <laughs> i'd be like well you know that one's smaller than the others it's about three quarters ish i guess yeah so if it said like oh two large eggs I'd go and buy large eggs if we only had medium eggs. <laughs> I'd use three eggs. Yeah. They're smaller. It'll work out somehow. Yeah, we get there in the end, though. Oh, yeah. So what's been your favourite meal this week, John? Um, I would say it was what we were talking about before. And mm. uh, I think it's probably... I think it might actually be my favourite meal. The favourite. Yeah, the, the I knew it was make. top five, but yeah, I think it might be my the favourite. favourite. You, you're kind of setting the benchmark really high for what's oh, on yeah. the plate now. I'm nervous. Can I get yeah. a drum roll? <laughs> <laughs> like, I know you're going to take pictures of it, and people are going to be like, "Oh, that's that looks," you know. The annoying thing but... is, right? I took a picture of all the ingredients, right. and then I chopped up what had to be chopped. <laughs> took another picture of it. Mm -hmm. Completely forgot. You didn't take a picture of the end product. No, so I've got. <laughs> picture of, of some chopped veg <laughs> brilliant brilliant you, should, you could just post those and like have no meal just be like take a guess at what i made well because then i started making it and then i ate it so <laughs> but i mean there's still some left so i could take a picture i was of gonna it. say there is a portion left yeah so just for the sake of the fact that we're talking about it now <laughs> Just take a picture of it before you eat it. I'll okay? need to remind me. Yeah, I'll take a picture. Like of it. it'll be in a Tupperware and everything because you're going to take it to work, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, so it'll be in a Tupperware. So it's not going to be the best picture, but anyway, it's <laughs> cheeseburger Dun -dun -dun. pasta. Cheeseburger pasta. What? Love it. Yeah. So depending what diet you follow, if you follow like a calorie controlled diet, this probably isn't going to be something that you would eat because it's quite a rich meal. But just as we follow Slim and World. That you have you get in like an allowance of cheese um so that's like your healthy extra choice if you follow it um i mean i'll put it on on our website and you can kind of see the ingredients and you can mess out the cheese if you want to do but i think the cheese really does make it yeah because otherwise it'd just be mincy pasta mincy i mean nothing wrong with mince pasta no i quite like a mince we like pasta. a bolognese bake and i was gonna say i made quite a lot of mincy pastas even before we discovered cheeseburger, cheeseburger pasta. pasta yeah like i used to make like a one with like pork mince, didn't I? It was like sausage meat. You did like pasta. a breakfast one. Yeah, yeah it was banging one. like with bits of bacon in it. I might yeah. make that again at some point. So this recipe, like when you read the ingredients, it feels like there's 10,000 different ingredients. But if you do a lot of cooking from scratch, a lot of it you'll have. You know, it's like Worcestershire sauce, stock cubes. I can't remember off the top of my head the rest of it. I really should have looked it up. But I was inspired by a website called Slimming Eats. Um, so that's where the recipe came from. And the only vegetables they put in it, I think, are onions and tomatoes and pickles. But we didn't have any tomatoes, so I put in a tin of tomatoes, onions, and John doesn't really like pickles. Yeah. So I put in like carrots pickles. and peppers. Yes. Yeah, so I mean, you, you can put in whatever veg you want, really. At the end of the day, it is just mincy pasta. But the way you cook it is one pot. So you throw all the ingredients in the pot, including the dry pasta. Mm -hmm. You put the lid on and you come back in 15 minutes. And it's like quite a watery sauce. So you take the lid off and then you measure your cheese and you pour that in. And you take it off the heat and you kind of stir it in. And then it goes like kind of velvety, like a like a bake. It's like a really thick... It, thickens up really nice it and does, it's a yeah. really like the cheese flavoursome sort of melts into the hot stock yeah of the pasta which yeah is really so really obviously good. you've got like the onions and the tomatoes the stock and it's all absorbed into the pasta so it's really really tasty yeah really tasty. i'm sure there's like a real technical name for well the recipe says that. stir in until velvety so velvety. velvety yeah so it tastes a bit like a pasta bake but 
it's a one pot ready in 15 minutes you gotta love a one pot i love one pots oh yeah they're just great yeah you you really need to have a big pot because our biggest pot that we've got is probably a little bit on the small side like i always spill some because it's like so full and you're trying to (laughs) stir it in so you really need a big pot for as you know everything i make i don't have a big enough pot no yes like when i when i cook um it's like a hurricane's just gone off in the kitchen (laughs) yeah splatters of sauce everywhere and you always like get some on your top (laughs) oh yeah yeah i'm like i'm I'm a proper cook yeah we need to get you a pinny yeah (laughs) i'm gonna get like like a proper like chef chef's outfit yeah 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 so i mean i'm sure you've heard of cheeseburger pasta if you have followed like summer world or i'm not sure if weight watchers do it see because ah. we don't follow weight watchers we're not sure about like the cheese kind of situation because obviously it's quite calorific but um yeah. in summer world you've got that kind of the calcium yeah you've got allowance a slight leeway yeah. yeah with yeah yeah with the healthy so, extras yeah obviously double check before you before you make anything but mm-hmm. it will be there and it is delicious so it either works out is well the recipe says it makes four portions but we get at least five and i do find it quite rich so i normally have half a portion with a salad or half a portion and then something after so i do find it quite rich so we get at least five if not more portions out of it and it says that it makes four portions and each portion is one allowance of healthy extra a or six sins yeah like see it is very rich because i use it for my lunch at work yeah and so it fills you up yeah so you know yeah after after like i have my lunch like in the middle of my day and i I do like 10 hour shifts yeah so when i have my lunch i've then got probably six or seven hours until i actually have my dinner because <laughs> yeah. i end up having my dinner late because yeah. i don't get home till by the time you like get home seven and, eight o'clock yeah. like by the time i've settled as well yeah so i don't have my dinner till eight and i've had my lunch at like one yeah and if I've had the cheeseburger pasta, I'm I'm usually pretty satisfied You're until fine. that point. Yeah. yeah, like I'm I'm ready for my next meal, but I'm not. What? How desperate. do you feel about it as a dinner? Yeah, it's, it's great. Like, you like it as a dinner. Yeah, again, well, if I have yeah. it for my dinner, like I, I I don't feel the need to snack later on. Yeah. Like I don't feel feel the need to go. Oh well, I'll just have a little nibble on something because I don't want to be hungry when I go to bed, and try yeah. and go to sleep, and then it'll get me through to the morning. Absolutely fine. Yeah, because I mean we. We do go to it a lot for lunches because it's you throw everything in, you put the lid on, it's ready in fifty minutes. Put it into Tupperwares, and it's really easy to reheat. Yeah, you know it keeps well in the fridge. We've frozen it before, and you just ding it in the microwave, and you and know it, it, it doesn't go soggy or anything. You know, it's, no, it's, it's just great. It's it's a good lunch. It's a good solid pasta dish. So it's, it's, so is it is it your number one, or are you not committing to that? I think it's a toss up between that and something else. Oh. Oh, the one we've talked. Yeah, the other one, I think I overdone it. I ate too much of it because I doubled the portion because I knew we were going to like it. And then I had it for like four weeks solid. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but it's it been a while now. Amazing. So I'm definitely I'm definitely ready for it again. Yeah. Hint, hint. There's some in the freezer. Once. Is there? Is <laughs> yeah. this because you did that much? There's still some in the freezer. <laughs> because see these recipes. It always says feeds four, but I don't know who these four people are. We always get way more than four. Like that bolognese bake I made, we got eight portions out of that. Yeah, and I'm a big guy. Like I eat healthy portions. Like yeah. like yeah, well, unhealthy portions. <laughs> <laughs> so whoever's eating like that between like four portions then you know they've, Good they've, on you. they've yeah. got to be right waddlers <laughs> uh that is something that you know yeah. i am conscious of i am at the point now where if i don't start losing weight i'm gonna turn into a waddler oh yeah, I reckon. yeah your your body shape is is you're quite fortunate with it aren't you i'm a large guy and and it's it's always le- allowed me to carry weight well yeah um yeah, like but you, now when i've you, got to when a you point say what your weight is it's always a lot heavier than what what you think well then any most yeah. people would expect but then now at this point i'm not carrying that weight well anymore no is it starting to i think it's yeah. start- i personally i think it's starting to tell it might be because i'm because i'm getting older as well and you're probably more you think you're more aware of it just now possibly i'm, yeah. I'm very hyper conscious of my weight yeah see when i was a little bit heavier than what i am now i don't think there was really one area that i didn't gain weight i just kind of everything got a little bit bigger mm. like so my engagement ring is now too big for me um obviously i had to get new clothes but even some of my shoes are too big for me now oh, really? yeah so i've even lost weight in my feet <laughs> <laughs> 
so I, I didn't really gain it like all in my butt or you know all in my stomach I kind of gained a wee bit everywhere <laughs> yeah whereas I just carry my weight very centrally yeah it's all in your belly all in my gut all in your belly yeah so recently I've been quite uninspired by cooking right to be honest like um we've not done like our big Sunday cook in a while no, we haven't done that for a while and I don't is... know if it's because of your shifts because you only need meals for Monday, Tuesday, because by the time Wednesday, Thursday, obviously you're off, so you'd kind of cook and eat. And then Friday, like, that's kind of like the final day, so yeah, it'd be a push to kind of have it got by those, then. Yeah, we've got those stop gaps in there. Like, so yeah. if we don't do a big batch cook on a Sunday, then we, as, as long as we've got enough lunches for me and you Monday, Tuesday, then I've got Wednesday, Thursday off, which means if we need to, I can batch cook on one of my days off. Yeah. And therefore, that gets us through you doing, like, the... Wednesday, doing, Thursday. Yeah, uh, yeah, you doing Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Well, Friday, we, we don't take lunch in. No. No, no. no we have a little... Lunch like, day. Yeah, we have a Aww, lunch date so in cute. work. Aww. It's kind of adorable because yeah. I work for the bank and she works in childcare. Yeah, I work for the nursery for the bank. Like, so. that's connected to the building. Yeah. So, like, yeah, it's just cute. We kind of rendezvous we in the lunch hall and, and have a little lunch there. But, yeah, so then that gets me through Saturday at work as well if I cook on my day off. Yeah. So then, therefore, and then you know, a, we're not yeah. sort of feeling the pressure to try and batch cook one day. And a Sunday is our only day off together. Yeah, so we kind of want to so do something do more things, fun than yeah. just... I really should just do it on a Saturday. But then I always think, oh, it's going to be off, but uh, I guess I could freeze it or something. Or at least do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then you could cook me something for Thursday. <laughs> yeah sure and then sometimes if i cook in the evening obviously because it's just the two of us mm. there's always leftovers yeah and that's i, it I as don't well, mind yeah. taking it and having it the next day the that's same it again. Yeah, yeah yeah so yeah a bit uninspired by food really yeah which is a shame we'll get there though as i said i'm uh i'm definitely gonna do the what's on your plate for for next week and i think i'm feeling yeah. experimental so i'm gonna oh. try something well new. i like your signature dish very much so I have and a you'd... signature dish? Yeah. Your famous dish. Oh, right. Okay. Um... And so it's not really... It's like an adaptation to make it more suitable for our diets, but it's still quite... It's got a couple of sins in it. You know, it's not like sin-free or anything like that. No, it's, it's not sin-free, but it's yeah. minimal. Minimal. It's worth, it's worth every sin. <laughs> it's beautiful. So hopefully you'll make that one day soon. Hint, hint. Yeah, maybe not for this week. Like I said, I'm feeling experimental this week, so I'm going yeah. to try something new. Exciting. And then, yeah. Hopefully it goes well so we can talk about it. If not... I'll just try something else I'll the next day. I'll rustle up something else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, I've got seven days to try. <laughs> hopefully we'll get one decent one, I am. Like I said, hopefully yeah. um, me taking the mantle a little bit on the cooking... Uh, next week will uh, inspire you a little bit. Yeah, or you could become inspired by that. Because I'm quite inspired by other things just now. That oh, yeah? Is, that makes me not want to be in the kitchen for six hours on my day off. Okay, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. To move on to uh, the next event of our podcast, which is Inspiration, Inspiration Corner. <laughs> we didn't discuss that. That just happened. We did that last week a few times as well, where we said the same thing at the same time, and yeah, yeah we don't we don't you... really plan those things. No, you jokingly last week said inspiration. I, uh, de I definitely uh, messing around, sang it, yeah, because yeah. it sounds like something like from like one of those cheesy like seventies shows, yeah, like eighties TV shows, like for kids, you know, like like the way like Blue Peter or Rainbow used to yeah. be, where they'd be like, oh, and now over to Inspiration Corner. <laughs> so yeah, it's been stuck in my head. Yeah, inspiration. Yeah, so so so, what's inspiring you, Carol? Well, I've got two very inspiring... Like, I feel inspired by two different events. So okay. the main one is, is the seasons are changing. They are. They are. Are you feeling, are you feeling <sighs> the seasonal change? I am. The dark, I think because I've been on the early shift, as I stated, getting up at half five, like, it's dark. So it feels like a cold wind. I had to scrape my car this morning. Yeah, I noticed that first frost of the yeah. year this morning. So I definitely Woo. feel in it. And there's a couple of, you know, turning trees around. Yeah, I've seen a few leaves. I've heard that little rustle. I love yeah. that noise. And we had to switch our heating on this week. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big thing. So, like, like we live like on the top floor of of a uh, block of flats. Well, second floor. Yeah, there's ground, first floor, and then us. So. Yeah, yeah. But we're, we're the top floor. We're not like we're, top floor. A, we're not like 14th story or something like that. No, and and we live we're second floor. We live yeah. above, you know, like some some. Some of the older generation, shall we say. Yeah. So they've always got the heating on. So it's great for us because heat rises. Heat rises, yeah. So, yeah. Our we, floors are always heated. It's lovely. It's wonderful. <laughs> so we don't tend to put our heating on during the year very much. So even and though when it's we on, do, like, we definitely mark that as a change of the season now. Yeah. So I'm sure it was, like, the last day of September or around about then that it clicked on for the first time. Because we did have a little mini heat wave, didn't we, at the weekend. It was really nice. What, this weekend? Yeah. I don't know, I was in work. Yeah, it was sunny, it was gorgeous. On the Saturday? Was that this weekend? Where... Possibly, yeah. Yeah, I remember you were working and I was potentially... Oh, that was the weekend before. I was working this Saturday as well. Anyway. We digress. We digress. So yeah, so the change of the season is inspiring you. Yeah. So so what have you... Have you done anything with your inspiration well, or...? no, because I'm still being inspired by my previous inspiration. <laughs> the minor one. So right. the, the change of season is a really big inspiration for me. But for the last month or two, I've been quite inspired by one of my friends. She's pregnant and it makes me feel crafty. And I've made like a little hat and a little taggy for the baby. Yeah, I've I'm seen so them. Excited. Yeah. They are adorable. Yeah, and the blanket is hard work. I've been every night, well, not every night, but a few nights a week for at least a month, if not. Yeah, more. you've been working hard on it. Like we've been watching watching our TV, and yeah. you know, as soon as we sort I took of sit it on down holiday to do with anything, me. yeah, you were on the. <laughs> I was on the plane, <laughs> crocheting away, making this little uh, blanket. Do you know what? It never ceases to make me laugh, and I've told pretty much everybody that we talk to. <gasps> And I said it to my dad as well, and he had a good old Aww. laugh. Big Al was was buzzing about it. Yeah. So um, yeah, yeah, our friend, our friends are pregnant, and I'd love to have a, a whole podcast about them because they're just the sweetest. Like they met in high school and they started dating, and their jobs kind of separated them for a bit. Like they were still together, but they were living like they had a long yeah, distance they had, relationship. Yeah, they had, they had a few years where they had to yeah had to sort of have a relationship over the globe. Yeah, and then you know they had to move to another country to suit his job and she moved with them and got a job out there and they were there a bit longer than they wanted and then they finally came back to Scotland and they've bought a house and they're pregnant and they're married they had their wedding last year that we went to was it yeah last last, last July yeah it was last July and wow. it's just a fairy tale of a story and yeah <laughs> so the fact that they're pregnant really inspired me and I made like a few wee gifts for the baby yeah and so i'm finishing off those before i move on to my new inspiration which is which is autumn autumn, autumn. you love those autumnal colors don't I you do. like orange is my favorite color like i love orange it's like orange burnt orange maroon is it mauve or something what's it called mauve mauve yeah mauve maybe i like that color yeah too. it's it's a shade of brown -ish. yeah like a brownie purple yeah so so this <sighs> sort of helps us move on to the main part of our podcast our, our weekly topic so so now we're going to talk about carol uh, i'm going to ask you what's amusing <laughs> so the we're going to muse over this week is this season yeah we yeah so segued into that real casual yeah, real we? smooth real oh, cash yeah what's amusing yeah so let's save autumn to last because it's coming into autumn what are your feelings about winter? Winter, you know, I think it's nice and picturesque and like the sky is a nice colour and if the snow is out, it's beautiful. I love the snow and I've worked in the Alps before so I really I can see like the ice and the icicles and crystal clear. <laughs> you definitely see the positive in it. Like, <coughs> so, so, I yeah, do, but it... also that means short days. Yeah. Scotland, it means rain and slush and black ice. Yeah, and it's only sunny for like, or well not sunny. It's only daylight for like an hour. You wake <laughs> yeah. up, you go to work in the pitch black. You come home from work in the pitch black. Yep. And it's cold all the time, and you're soggy all the time because your feet are wet or your hands are wet. It's raining sideways, like icicles in your face. <laughs> so all the, yeah, it's got good and bad bits, but it means like snuggling up under a blanket and drinking a nice mocha or a, a 
of coffee and I mean it's Christmas and New Year. Yeah. And it's See, lots of nice. I things. like I like Christmas. I like I like the 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 heart of winter, you know? Yeah. Like like Christmas like December January it's a magical time and and it makes even like the biggest oldest grumpiest people like myself like a bit happy you yeah, know yeah. um but no like as we were saying like yeah. the the snow so s snow in scotland i would say is very different to having snow how in many winters there. have you had here you've had two winters here. just two in scotland yeah, and yeah they've been very different winters like the yeah, first winter last winter was quite mild yeah it was um, a wet winter i'd say it was yeah it rained quite a it bit i remember there was one day you said to me you're like i can't Dan living in Scotland, it's always raining. Does it ever stop? Because this was a point where you were getting public transport every day for work and you had yeah. to walk quite a bit from bus stop to work. Yeah. And you were just wet. All the time. All the time. All the time. In work, out of work. When I got home, like, yeah. I'd shower, get changed and just sit on the sofa and just try and be warm for a few hours. Yeah. And, and that was my life, you know? And then there's me who's, like, really tight being like, switch off the heat and you don't need that pet jumper on if you're cold. <laughs> But I couldn't put a jumper on because they were all wet. <laughs> yeah, it takes days to dry anything, doesn't it? Yeah, care. see, that's that's a nightmare as well. And then yeah. the first winter, I would say, I'd that say was worse. That was a worse. white winter. Yeah, I'd yeah. say it was worse because it, it, it snowed, snowed so lot. much. And and with snow in Scotland, as I was saying, like it's so different to having snow in Val d'Isere because it snows here and you go, oh, that's pretty the first day. And then you have to live in it. And it's not yeah. good when you live in Scotland because it's cold and as you said it's just the black ice and you got people falling around everywhere you got people hurting themselves yeah, traffic's and, a nightmare and like it's hard to get around everywhere car. like trying to get to work and like and yeah back. Like, that it's first just... winter that we came back here i was a carer in the community so you were, I, yeah. I drove around house to house um in my car like helping elderly and vulnerable adults so whether it was like helping them with a shower in the morning or making them lunch, remind them to take their medication or just a bit of company. Like mm. I kind of done it all because it was a mixture yeah. of private and local authority. But that doesn't stop just because it's snowing. Well, that's it. Like, I mean, you probably, yeah. at that point, you were probably needed more. Yeah. And the fact is, like, we'd only just got back and we didn't exactly have the most reliable car. No, we had bruce bruce was was great like bruce definitely shouldn't have been sold to us because he wasn't in good enough condition no he was but, an ex-taxi yeah he barely passed his mot like he had a lot of like stuck together bits and Aye. i only paid i think it was 200 pounds for him yeah it, it was cheap as everything yeah. it was just a quick run around until we got ourselves sorted so which was great but i mean yeah. like we definitely loved bruce like um, and so like we we named the cars that we have so we've currently got maggie yeah um and we did have bruce um and bruce was an old skoda octavia uh wow. diesel and as yeah. carol oh, said diesel, it used to be yeah. a taxi so it rumbled and bumbled around and but you know and... what i never once got stuck in the snow or broke down or overheated or that's it it was just it was like he one was of those miracle yeah, yeah it was just one of those miracle cars that just kept going swimming. no matter what yeah Yes, I had to dig other people out of their, out, like, dig cars that were stuck, uh, other carers. I had a bucket of grit, I had a, <laughs> a shovel in my boot, I had blankets, everything. And, yeah, like I said, that job does not stop. Like, you don't get a snow day, they don't close the office. Like, those no. people are vulnerable and they That's won't it. eat unless a carer comes in. They That's won't remember it. to take in their the medication. In the snow and the cold and the ice, you're needed Yeah, and I remember more. it was snowing sideways. There was red warnings all over the news like... oh yeah don't go out unless you absolutely definitely need to yeah and... like my office was closed yeah yeah you, you were, were like we were snowed in like i couldn't park the car in our street because the gritters don't come down yeah. our street all the time like they come down but not every every day so i had to park like on the main road and mm. like walk out to it and oh no hang on i wasn't at the office was i that was when i was uh over at tesco oh was it yeah, you so I was, to work, yeah. I was walking to work. I had my, my <laughs> your snow boots. I had my snow boots <laughs> and uh, my uh, all weather like uh, rain onesie. <laughs> yeah, my rain onesie <laughs> on and my rain jacket that I now know is not very waterproof. <laughs> no, the seams are not waterproof. It's just that. great, yeah. So, so you've I... experienced two very different winters. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with this Although one. I did see a headline that we're getting snow next week. Uh, yeah, I have seen a few things. Like, you always see things on Facebook yeah. and that like that. Like, oh, it's going to be the worst winter ever. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so we don't know if it's going to be a wet winter or a white winter, a mild winter. Who knows? Either or. It's winter. Yeah, so after winter you've then got spring. 
spring i always feel is a really short season in scotland like because winter is so long like i feel like it's yeah really, i feel like yeah. uh, like i used to used to get more of a spring in wales i feel probably you get yeah. more of a gradual change to the season like it starts to dry up more because winter in wales is wet like it's right. invariably wet mm. because it's all mountains and all coastal yeah. and everyone lives on the coast and then so clouds come off the sea hit the mountains rain <laughs> so it just it's just raining yeah. Oh, always yeah and when it snows there because you're so coastal there's too much salt there's too much salt in the air from the sea lie, so yeah. so yeah you don't get that much like you have to go inland a bit mm. more um so yeah it just can't like so you get more of a more of a spring in wales than than you have in scotland i feel like scotland kind of right, yeah. kind of skips it when you like, see those oh it's getting warmer oh look it's warm now yeah when you see those like daffodils or the bluebells or the snowdrops coming up yeah. you start getting excited see that's it i mean yeah. i think in wales we have a bit more of an affinity to spring yeah i mean saint david's day is the first of march right um the saint saint david's day flower is the daffodil the daffodil of yeah course. our national flower is the daffodil so it's quite a weak flower though i'm not gonna lie but it's beautiful and it it's is there beautiful. for spring you know it's it's there it's, spring has sprung it's a weak flower but it represents a lot yeah it does. so so i think i have an affinity to spring <laughs> like quite a lot you know yeah makes me think of like but then in scotland like you get all the daffodils coming up and it'll be a wee bit warm and then second winter comes. oh yeah it goes cold again the rain comes there's probably a bit of frost i don't it think... snows at easter yeah. quite a lot i don't yeah do you know what like that first yeah. year was really bad i think that was probably the worst part like when it snowed um in april yeah i think um, even just, i think it even hit the first of may like i, I th think it was really I think, late I think it was snow. really bad like the fur like the week before easter i remember it being particularly bad and then yeah. and like me have having to trudge into work even though like everybody was supposed to be at home yeah. like because i was the only person who didn't have to drive to work oh they were like oh we need somebody like yeah, on the... i'm snowed in i can't make yeah it. that was it so so many people were and like i had to trudge into work like Aww. with my boots on and you know have like a change of clothes in my bag and everything yeah, for once got to work yeah i kept yeah. all my work clothes in my bag because there was no point in wearing them no they'd just... be ruined by the time yeah. i got to work okay. and then i'd have a change of clothes for when i finished work to get <laughs> home because the clothes that i walked down in were It'd soaked and ruined yeah. <laughs> oh yeah i'd like i may as well moved out every day you know <laughs> that week a suitcase Hi. <laughs> I try to drag like a, a rolly case through the snow. <laughs> Put on a sledge. <laughs> that's it. That's what I'm doing this year. Yeah. Because I've got quite a trek to work now. Yeah, but the good thing is that when our shifts match up, it works. <laughs> yeah, but when our shifts don't match up. Yeah, when I'm leaving at half six in the morning. You... I'm not getting up for that. No. no. Like, I'm in work relatively early, but I'm not in work that early. No, no. We're we're so, braving ourselves ready for winter. But yes, yeah. we've went winter, spring, spring, second winter. Yeah, <laughs> everyone's favourite. I think it's coming up. Yeah. Not my favourite. I enjoy a lot of things about summer. I feel that you do more. Like, see, when you come home from work and it's still bright for like five hours, like I'm more I'm more inspired to cook and do the housework and go a walk and do all these things. Whereas, see, when you come home at five o'clock and it's pitch black, like. I'm yeah, not doing anything. And my jammies are on then. and yeah, I'm on that it's sofa. It's night time then, yeah. yeah I get, I, I Whereas guess... if you come home and it's still a bit warm and the sun's out, like you want to yeah. hang out and socialise and get on with things. You don't I guess so. In. I guess like summer is more of an energetic time for everybody. Yeah. Um, but there's certain things that I really don't like about summer. Is that the children being off school? It, well, that is one of the things, yeah. yeah. Like, and, and I find it hard to regulate myself. I get really bad insomnia in the summer. Because it uh, is yeah, bright, and I, I don't feel like I'm settling down till about 10, 11 o'clock at mm. night. And and to be honest, like <laughs> this is going to sound ridiculous because we lived abroad, but I don't like being hot. You really don't, and that's, I really it don't. Surprises me still. Like yeah. like yeah, I lived abroad for years, and I I hate being hot. Ten years. I I'd, I'd much rather be cold. I enjoy being cold. Mm. I, I feel. I enjoy being just in the middle. Like I don't want to put on no. loads of layers, but I I don't want to be sweaty either. <laughs> that is wrong you <laughs> you are incorrect you have a different perception of yourself than is reality i do not wear lots of layers yes you do you're always really warm you're always got a blanket and you you always got like heavy duvet and stuff like that yeah you Fibs. are you are not Fibs. a balanced person when it comes to temperature <laughs> you need heat 
yeah, I mean, I enjoy a blanket, but I don't enjoy going out with like, okay, I've got my t-shirt, I've got my cardigan, I've got my jumper, I've got my jacket, I've got my scarf. Like, no, I just want to put my cardigan on and go. Yeah, you're not, like, you're, yeah, you're not ridiculous, but like, yeah, you, you are one of these people who who needs to be warm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, cold. so I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Even though, like, all your appendages are freezing. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So. So no, no, so summer. you are not balanced. No, but summer means barbecues, days out, cycling. Yeah, like, like that's I what feel we were saying. Everybody in the summer. Yeah, everybody's a bit more energetic. Like it brings everybody's energy levels. I think. But also chills them out as well. I feel like summer is everybody's like time to be social and beautiful and vibrant. Yeah, like everybody's more attractive in the summer. <laughs> is that why we we fell in love abroad? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I was I was at my best, <laughs> and now you're stuck with this. This hairy man. Aye, this big fat hairy man. Pale you know? man. Aye, aye, <laughs> gutted, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ha! So so that's summer. Summer summer summer's like, wonderful. Yeah, like, like when I think days. about summer, like I think of like sitting in a beer garden yeah. with a few ciders. Not that we ever really get to do this, but. No. Just gives you the opportunity. We do sometimes, and it, it's it's lovely. Yeah, I definitely feel more energized. Yeah, as I said, like when I come home from work and stuff. Yeah. And then the grand finale. Yeah, Carol's fave. Why is it your favorite, Carol? I honestly don't know. I think because, like as I said, winter feels really long, so I do quite enjoy spring. Like, cause I'm ready for the change. Yeah. And summer, it it can feel a bit long. Because mm -hmm. people make the most of it, like, after Easter, they're like, oh, it's summer. Like, you know, we've got to do things at the weekend, and it starts getting lighter. Mm. And then the school holidays, like, although we work throughout them, like, it's just busier. Like, everywhere you go, there's people there. Hate it. You do hate <laughs> it. And it just can feel quite long, and I'm ready. I'm ready for a change after summer. I'm yeah. ready for... Yeah, I, uh, me too. Yeah. Like, I, I get it as well. Like, I, I do enjoy autumn. I think, like, obviously, like, from what we've talked about, my favourite is spring. I'll always feel that affinity to spring. Yeah. But, but no, I do enjoy autumn. I like I like the, the changing seasons. Yeah, I like the mm. colour scheme of autumn, as we said. Like, all my favourite colours are there. Yeah, it really does and inspire And it does inspire, inspire things, me. Yeah. Like, things that I'm not good at or never really have done. Like, it's like drawing or painting like i love a watercolor of like a tree with all the leaves falling off and then it's right like the oranges and the browns surrounding yeah. it and it does inspire me to kind of to do those things which i've never really been interested in before mm -hmm. like painting and stuff like that but well, you, you know, did, did some painting on a holiday didn't you i did yeah yeah you really enjoyed that my, my postcard the day yeah. watercolor yeah like that was on your your social media, wasn't it? But yeah, it's on my Instagram. So we might try and put that on the site because it was it was really cool. Yeah, and like considering I, it's not something that you do, it was really uh, good. Yeah, and I used like a different liquid every day. Yeah, I used a different yeah thing to. Yeah, so I used like salt water, um, coffee, diet coke, a pool water. Yeah. Melted ice cream. Sun cream. Sun cream. That was a hard one. Sun cream was a really difficult yeah, but one. It was. Like the rest of them were kind of quite easy. Like obviously salt water and pool water and melted ice cubes. And I used a gin one time. I used a pink gin. Yeah, yeah. And lemonade. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's quite I have fun. a pink gin. That, that, that made me feel all holiday and summer. Yeah. Like pink I like that, that challenge I set myself that every day I had to use a different mm. liquid. Like. That I find that inspiring, like little challenges. Yeah. I remember um, years ago I was delivering a training course and it was like seven days long and I decided that I was going to challenge myself to have a different hairstyle every day and I sent a picture to John every day of like my different hairstyle. Like he was buzzing <laughs> about it. And um, buzzing. Like everyone could not notice, but like they commented that like, my hair was getting a bit more extravagant every day because it wasn't just like I a ponytail or a bun. You had to get creative by day yeah. six and seven, yeah. <laughs> And um, so I was telling them, I was like, oh, uh, like the, the people were training, I was like, oh, I challenge myself every day to do a different hairstyle. And like, oh, asking the other trainers, like, oh, what, what did, what was your challenge? And everyone was like, we didn't have to set ourselves a challenge. <laughs> that's, I just, that's just Carol I being just Carol. I just decided to challenge myself. <laughs> that's just what Carol does. I like how we challenge. You're a quirky I? little soul, aren't you? <laughs> 
it was just what the the realization that no one else has set a challenge like why why did i give myself this challenge yeah why did you do that but you get these ideas in your head and you're like yeah i'm gonna do that then yeah i'm quite stubborn like adamant that i will i will do it so that's our seasons and uh like as we were saying like they're they're the seasons that sort of inspire yeah. us and stuff like that so what's your favorite season? yeah so let us know let yeah us know. like if you've got any pictures or anything of like your favorite time yeah i've got you know what? i've got a beautiful picture from that first winter um mm. on the and the first snow oh. that we came back to i took a picture because yeah. uh, that was when we were living with your parents for a bit yeah um, it was november remember, we came back yeah wasn't it? i remember because i just started um uh i just started a job can't remember which one might have been tesco might not have been don't know um but i'd started a job um and i've stepped out and i would just stepped out into the snow in the morning i just took a picture of it mm. and it's just the most beautiful picture it's like a winter wonderland in scotland because it's just like that, that grassy hill across the way and it's just yeah amazing. i've got quite a few different pictures from my parents house because right outside their door is a mm. bright red post box and i feel that just represents oh. that, that that just little corner there represents the seasons really yeah, well, yeah so yeah there's trees behind it and stuff so you can tell if it's autumn or yeah. if it's spring or if it's mm -hmm. just by this bright red post box i think it just makes it so beautiful if we can we'll try and put some sort of collage together with yeah. with that post box and some pictures and stuff like that so yeah. that'd be really good we don't really have a good like seasonal vantage point from our flat do we we don't know yet no, no. i, I guess... don't think so like i haven't recognized anything last year and it's just no. pretty much like out the front we've got a street and out the back we've got some trees that cover everything but, <laughs> so we've got yeah, some privacy cover a different street yeah yeah so <laughs> um but yeah so that's our, our seasonal chat that's our what's amusing yeah um and uh, we're gonna move very very swiftly on to our entertainment bug entertainment bug um so well, i'm we've not really watched as much tv this week no 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 we've we've sort of gone behind a we little bit. have started watching killing eve oh, and amazing. we've made it through the first season yeah so but I'm i gonna... don't really want to talk about too much because... i was just about to say yeah. I'm, we're gonna wait till the second season until we talk about killing eve so we've finished it we're up to date with the rest of the world yeah because uh, obviously like jodie coma's just won the emmy and stuff like that so so we'll go and do like what we call a deep dive on deep killing dive. eve uh, when we'll probably dedicate pretty much an entire episode to yeah, chat about be because we we spoilers for us we have genuinely loved it it's been so good we yeah. just devoured a season within a couple of nights yeah. um and then for the for the actual entertainment bug this week i'm going to do a deep dive after this um which is all going to be based on a show that me and you watched oh. which was the island oh yeah yeah, which you really we've enjoyed. Got, we've got different feelings about that, haven't we? Yeah, it's actually going to be my entire entertainment bug because there's so much that annoyed me about so it. So much that bugs you. Yeah. <laughs> genuinely, like, I, I'm going to talk about it for a while. There's yeah. some really bad acting and some terrible script writing. So so this week we did watch The Great British Bake Off again. But yeah, on a positive, yeah, we watched uh, Great British Bake Off. And I made a point. I, I challenged myself to see if I could remember everyone's name. Yeah, likewise. Because I felt, I felt really rude. Likewise, yeah, it was really bad. Like, we have watched it every week and we just yeah, haven't bothered remembering names. Five, well, now six episodes and didn't know the names. Yeah, so, but now we do. Now we do, yeah. Now we do. We've got Alice, Steph, David, Rosie, Henry and Michael. Yes, I did write it down, but I remembered it first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so if you say Alice, you know who that one is. She's the one I don't like. Yeah, so She's we've a got teacher. We yeah, we've got different opinions on Alice. Yeah, so. and by I say don't like, like I I don't mean anything about it. I just mean that not my face. That you're not really. rooting for her. Yeah, people people yeah. know that you don't like hate her as a person or anything like that. Yeah. Because you don't know her. I'm not, not... going to boo her if she walks by me. <laughs> <laughs> if you sit in the street and be like, boo, <laughs> you were terrible on Great British Bake Off. Yeah, I mean, she's great. She's a teacher. She seems lovely. She's just not for me. I quite like her because yeah. like, I feel like she came in and she was very... Boo. Yeah, <laughs> like a little bit sort of like stereotypically posh and a bit mm. ditzy about it but i feel like she's kind of settled down and she got used to the cameras around her and she's kind of just quietly going about her business really really well and i think yeah. personally she probably deserves star baker this week she did yeah i felt i felt like that was unfair that steph got it i again. feel like they gave it to steph so she had three in a row yeah because paul's a poo face yeah only one person's ever done that before <laughs> but that person that got three in a row didn't win the season that year no i feel that they peak and then they that's it yeah. so so i like steph like steph we like i'm i was backing her but i'm a bit worried now yeah the thing is they look at it week to week so if you're a star baker last week doesn't mean that you're safe 
That's the following it. week. Like if you if you mess up on all three, you're out. And That's as it, it's yeah. getting like there's only six of them left, and you know yeah. sometimes a mess up isn't that bad, but it's the worst mess up there. Yeah. But, but I think I think between us, we've definitely got the ones that we want to be in the final and definitely ones that we don't. Yeah, so David, neither of us are really the biggest fan. Not a big fan. I don't know what it is about him, but I just uh, I don't feel any sort of empathy towards him. And, yeah. and he, like, he came in, he was like, yeah, I really want to do, like, healthy baking. I yeah. want to do baking that's, like, good for people and healthy. And he feels like, feels like he's just kind of abandoned that now. Yeah. And he's just like, I'm just baking. Like, I just want to win now. He's completely forgot. Yeah, yeah like, that, he, he came in with some sort of ethos, which I didn't enjoy. But yeah. the fact is that if he'd stuck by it, I'd probably respect him at least. Yeah. So now I just want him to go, because he's not done what he said, and he's not the best baker. And then Rosie is the girl who we said we didn't like the voice of, but we do like her, the farmer girl. We do like girl. her. She's really good. She's really yeah. humble. She, she tries really hard, and she's got a sense of humour. She seems like a um, real person, yeah. Yeah, she's exactly. Normal... Like she's, she feels person. quite grounded and quite genuine, Yeah. which I like. But her voice, though, like, is that an accent or is it the pitch? Like, what is it? I don't it's like the it. pitch. It it's the pitch? pitch. She's so high pitched. Yeah. They're, like, it's it's childlike almost. Imagine being so high pitched. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not screechy, though, and you're not squeaky. No. 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 Um, and then we've got Henry, who we're also not really a fan of. Not a massive of. fan of. Like, where's a shirt and tie to bake? It's like he's trying to prove a point. Yeah, he wears a just... shirt and tie to bake off. Like it's Every yeah. Week. It's like he's trying to be quirky. He's trying to prove a point. Yeah. And I, I don't like. It. I think he exaggerates the pressure he puts on himself. Yeah. Yeah. Like he always oversells it. Yeah. Seems to be like really, really stressed. Like he's doing so much. And yeah. it's like, well, once or twice, like fair enough. Like, but if you're doing it every time, maybe you just need to like dial things back a bit, mate, and yeah. like do what and you're doing well rather than trying to do yeah. so much. What you said the other night was that he he looks too young. <laughs> Yeah, like so. He, hilarious. So <laughs> I forgot that I said this, but now that you've just reminded me, so yeah, he looks like an adult-sized five-year-old. <laughs> so like, if if you blew up a five-year-old, you know, like how you blow up a picture, he looks like somebody's. I thought you meant we're getting like crazy like, exploded. There, no, yeah. no, like like you blow up a picture, like if, yeah. if you blew up a five-year-old to <laughs> an adult them. size, yeah. that's what Henry looks like, and he's just put a shirt and tie on himself. <laughs> To make himself look like an adult. It's like somebody's like done big, but not properly. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's why I don't like Henry. Because he just doesn't quite make yeah. sense to me. And then finally we've got Michael, who I'm still a bit hit and miss with. Yeah, like, I think Michael, we he's have... He's funny though. He makes jokes, like, that I find funny. Like, that I... he's quick -witted. I, don't. I don't find his jokes funny. I like, find his jokes what is irritating. It? He makes, like, little comments. Yeah, like, like... I, I don't know. Like, some weeks... I really enjoy what he does there yeah and then some weeks i'm like oh just get off the screen yeah it's just really irritating trying too hard to be funny but i don't think he is though like i just i find him funny i do find him a bit annoying sometimes yeah i, th I think he comes across like he's trying to be funny like he's trying too hard to be funny but yeah. i think that's I just relate. the way he is i can relate to him yeah maybe like... i try too hard <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah there's a bit of a long pause there john mm -hmm. We all know I'm the funny one in this relationship. Aren't apparently, you? apparently. And Priya left this week, didn't she? Which I, I was Good. all right about. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't really the biggest like, fan if, of her. If somebody deserved to go, I th I'd say it'd be her. Yeah. Um, she's struggled through for yeah, a number kind of, of weeks now. Rustled it to like what's it called? Yeah. Like, pull it all together, kind of at last minute. Like, yeah, like fumbled yeah. through type of thing. She. She's had a few weeks where she's been near the bottom yeah. coming into the showstopper and managed to get herself through. Yeah. Sometimes justifiedly and sometimes not, in my opinion. I feel that since Mary Berry left, the yeah. technical challenges have either been ridiculously hard or stupid. Like, it doesn't show their technical ability very well. Yeah, I... Because it's all things they've never heard of or are really weird to make and... They're not doing that well this year. I feel that all the technicals. Are yeah, like... I tend to. I tend to agree. I think the technical has got to the point where it's become a bit farcical. Yeah, they're thinking of something they've never heard of, never made, like no idea how to make. Whereas exactly. before, it was like they had to make like giant tea cakes. Like everyone knows what a tea cake looks like. Yeah. Or make like there was one. It's difficult to make, yeah. but then at the same time, it, at least you know what you're skill, aiming like for. The biscuit, the mallow, the jam, exactly. Like, the, the chocolate over the top. Like, yeah, like I remember skills. them making fondant fancies. Oh yeah. French fancies at French some fancies, point. French fancies, yeah. And and I was like, yeah, I mean that that's difficult to make. 
Yeah, or I like it when they're like told they've got to make like, you know, six identical bloody yeah, blah. yeah, six identical perfect of a certain thing that everyone's heard of. Like, why is it always these weird things that no one's heard of that they're just kind of yeah, it's like, in the dark. So like these random like French patisserie things, and it's like, oh, I'll make a vluvity vlu. And you have to make six of them and you have half an hour. And people yeah. are like, I don't know what a vluvity vlu means. I don't know what that is. Yeah, so I feel that it's not really challenging them technically. It's like, what weird and wonderful things It's just there to of. trip them up, yeah, yeah. And it just feels wrong. I guess they're kind of trying to make it exciting still. In like the big scary challenge. But there's no need. It, there was nothing wrong yeah. with it. it there's, there's an old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, that's so. true. So yeah... Now you're going to go into your kind of deep. <laughs> going to go into my deep dive bug about the island. Okay, well. First of all, there's the name. <laughs> and we'll go from there. Okay. Mm, da, 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 da. So I'm just going to put it out there now. Uh, this is the entertainment bug, as I said, is towards the entire show, the island. So if you haven't watched that yet, there's going to be a lot of spoilers involved in the next sort of five ten minutes of the podcast so uh feel, please feel free to just skip straight through to the end or just join us next week so thank you very much for your time guys and i really really hope you listen to us next week and we do appreciate everything that you've said so far uh but we're gonna go for our entertainment bug and that is the island it, it's very rare that we'll t pick an entire show to be the entertainment bug but i think i was just so disappointed by the show so it's the first ever creation of of a writer called anthony salter so it's, it's as a premise, it's I found it quite interesting, but I was immediately disappointed after I watched the first episode. Carol went, oh, what do you think? And I said, well, it's, it's kind of interesting, but I can see that, like, I think it's either going to be like a prison thing or it's going to be a Truman Show thing. It, it feels like one of those. And she sort of went, oh, right, okay. And then I was really disappointed a few episodes in when it revealed what the plot was, and it seemed to be an amalgamation of the two. So straight away, quite disappointed the fact that I could see through the show when it was obviously trying to be quite mysterious, and and I would have appreciated to be wrong about that. I felt the the subtle hints that they were going for were like bricks, especially at the end of the last episode where she breaks the conch shell and there's a barcode inside of it and it's like oh right okay this is this is all very obvious now um so the premise disappointed me the first episode was directed by a director called neil labute so you get a de guest director in and he sort of contributed to the writing as well so i, I kind of get why they got him but if you get a guest director in to direct one episode as your first episode you really want that to have some impact when but for me labute doesn't really have that pathos as a director uh most notably in his directing credits you'd say would would be nurse betty the rene zelviger film from years ago which was really really good but since then it's all been a bit trashy and and the most notable things that he's done since then would be death at a funeral and the Nicolas Cage version of Wicker Man. Now, if you're looking at those and going, ah, oh, those are the things he's directed, you're not going to get him in to do your first episode, are you? Like, in recent years, he's he's done, he's been an episodic director from a lot of TV shows. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, because there's a lot of good quality directors who, who do that now. Um, uh, but the other directors was very were very much sort of journeyman directors from other shows, uh, as well as Jonathan Scarf, who's who's an actor turned director, and I kind of get why he's done that because his biggest acting credit is being um, Axel on Van Helsing. So good luck to him, um, but he's got to do better than than the shows he directed here. The directing seemed very sort of superficial to me. Lots of pretty beach shots of pretty people who are supposed to be dramatic but it just the writing the premise and the actual execution of the directing and the cinematography none of it quite matched up to me which sometimes can make for a really interesting show but this time just made for a weird mishmash of a very super superficial higgledy piggledy show uh so that's that's probably the biggest reason why it disappointed me but then 
I, I, lo- I love watching the actors and actors doing great acting on screen. And we just really didn't get that from here. I'd say the best performance came from the lead character, Natalie Martinez, was probably the, hot, the thing that dragged me through 10 episodes of that, which I'm kind of gutted about because I could have spent that time watching something that I would have preferred to watch. But she was very, very good. And she's she's had a lead in this. And hopefully that will sort of lead her on to do more interesting products, uh, projects from this point and casting directors will be looking at her in for, for more sort of established writers and, and directors and performers and more interesting shows from this point. The, the sort of next biggest female lead would be uh, Kate Bosworth. So if you don't know who Kate Bosworth is, uh, she was probably most notable for being uh, Lois Lane in that terrible iteration of Superman with Brandon Routh, who now plays the Atom in the Arrowverse. And uh, uh, beyond that, I can't think of much that she's been in. Nothing really sort of notable. Um, and, and and probably probably rightfully so. I, I, think, I think the character was supposed to be very mysterious and very interesting. And she just came off as very apathetic. I didn't really care about the character. I didn't really see what they were going for. Um, I think they were trying to sort of build her through the season, so she became very interesting. But by the time they revealed her story, which was probably the best best storyline from from the whole thing, I didn't really care. I didn't really care what she'd been through because she'd upset me with her terrible acting for the first, like, six episodes. The, probably the best or most notable actor in the whole thing would be Alex Pettifer. Now... And this is the thing that bugs me as well. So why get such a good actor in and completely underutilize him? He played a character who was quite interesting and quite well portrayed. But then spoilers, as I said, lots of spoilers in this. He dies in the second episode. Instantly, I was like, well, great. So there's my favorite thing about the show. Gone. Excellent. Brilliant. Wonderful. Why Why do that? Why, why get somebody who genuinely good? And, and lose them. If you don't know who Alex Pettifer is, he was quite a big star for his age as he went through his teens into his early 20s. He was Stormbreaker, uh, was his first big sort of breakout role. And then he was in that Disney-esque superhero thing, which was quite interesting, called I Am Number Four. Really, really interesting premise to that. It's a real shame that they didn't sort of go forward with that. I thought they were going to really try and push for a series, but I guess it just didn't get the numbers it was supposed to have. And they, and at that point, the rest of the actors, unfortunately for me, dialed in really bad performances. I'm not going to talk about most of them because most of the people on the island... I didn't really get a sense of their character. The writing felt very rushed. The The directorial felt very rushed as well. It was like they just tried to throw it out there and see what would stick. And unfortunately, very little of the show stuck. So when you're looking at other performances, I'm looking sort of towards... Uh, Ronald Pete really, really irritated me. It was like he was trying to do his best impression of Sterling K. Brown. Now, if you don't know who Sterling K. Brown is, he was in the most recent Predators. He's He's been in lots and lots and lots of seasons recently. Uh, he had his... I, I know him from uh, a guest role that he did as Gordon, the hunter on Supernatural. And he's a really interesting actor. He's very dark, very broody, very cold... Very good actor, very interesting. Always comes off as quite an intelligent actor. And it was like Ronald Pete was desperately trying to do uh, his impression of Sterling K. Brown because the director wanted a Sterling K. Brown-esque but couldn't afford him. So that just really, really irritated me because it felt like, oh, I've got a sort of quasi-Sterling K. Brown. Don't really want that. I'd want the real one or somebody trying to do something a little bit different. And then when we're looking at the other performances, as I said, a lot of people dialed things in. But the thing that really bugged me, and I think the thing that sort of turned me off the show and made me think, well, no, this 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 has bugged me so much that I've got to bring it up, was the two marshals. Now, I don't know the actors very well, but I just made a note of their names. Uh, and that's um, Kaylin Durrell-Jones and Clara Wong. Now, their acting was hammy. The, the way they delivered the script... I don't know, it was like they they read it a couple of times, didn't really look into the characters and just went for it. And it was just awful from start to finish. The, the, the big reveal scene, 
that they do towards the end where they go into the jury and have to talk and don't reveal who had employed them. Oh, it was just, I don't know, it was just awful. They were terrible, especially him. He was really, really bad. I, I actually think I will actively avoid watching him on my screen from now on. I'm going to make a note of Kalen Doral Jones because he was so bad that I don't want to watch him on my screen again. I will avoid anything that he's in, I think, unless it's got way good people in that I have to have to watch. Um, the, I think that's what really, they really irritated me. And then the one that I was probably most disappointed by was watching Bruce McGill. Now, I love Bruce McGill. He's one of these journeyman character actors. You see him in a bit of everything. If you've watched any TV or films for the last 20, 30 years, you probably have seen Bruce McGill in something. He's a great character actor. He always pops up in things. He's one of those foundation actors. He is he's there for everything. And and seeing him in a bit it, it was just it was just a bit strange the character that he was going for he was going for like this i felt like he was going for like this texan oil baron sort of character but he was a prison governor it just came across to me like he was playing an old danny mcbride like so danny mcbride if you don't know who he is uh he comes from eastbound and down he plays kenny powers if you haven't watched that show, go and watch it. It's amazing. It's hilarious. It's not brilliantly made, but I just love it. And it's just wonderfully fun. Which works for comedy, because he's he's playing a complete send-up of himself. But it's like Bruce McGill was going for a serious version of that character in a dramatic role. And it just came across as like ridiculous because of that. It was it was like he was playing this comedy role in a dramatic context and i think overall i think i've come to the crux of why that show bugged me so much is because it was trying to be a drama mystery with poor writing with superficial directing so it was like trying to be a drama mystery show but shot like bloody baywatch and with the writing of something like Riverdale and it's just this big mishmash of things that didn't quite work for me it just needed to sit in an area that's interesting now don't get me wrong I don't pigeonhole show shows um I like when things are intriguingly different when you go oh I think I'm watching this and it's like oh all of a sudden it's really different but it didn't give itself enough time to be an interesting mystery and switch tack because it just rushed through those 10 episodes. So I think I've come to the crux of it. The fact that the island bugged me so much is because it tried to be so many things and didn't land on any one of those things. And if you're going to make a show, just don't run, don't rush it. Like Netflix gave you 10 episodes and you tried to tell a 20 episode story in that. Break it down. Make it interesting. I didn't know, need to know that they were in a prison until the last episode. That could have been your big reveal instead of the big reveal being some weird like, oh, she's been a prisoner for 25 years. She's really shocked. Oh, she got over it and walked out of the prison. Done. Just, it was, yeah, it was just silly. The whole show was really, really, really silly. So thank you very much for listening to me ramble on um, like a mean old grump. <laughs> About the silly island. I personally really enjoyed it. I I loved it. I think I watched it all in like a day. <laughs> but it was really silly. I know, but if, if you don't look into it too deeply, just enjoy it for what it is. What, silly? Okay, moving on. <laughs> Yeah, so um, thank you very much for listening. Uh, we do really, really appreciate that. If you do have any pictures... Yeah, if you made uh, it all like the way to the end... Yeah, if you have any pictures you'd like to share of uh, your seasons, your seasonal photos, then uh, do send those in to us. Yeah, or a recipe you think we should try. For our what's on your plate, yeah, that'd be great. Um, if you'd like us, yeah, to try and make anything that you think uh, we'd enjoy. Um, 
then uh, do let us know. Uh, we're always looking for feedback. Any questions you might have for me or Carol, um, then do send those in as well. And uh, next week, uh, we do actually have our oh. uh, musing. So we will be amusing uh, about the uh, our topic next week, which is school discos. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, if you have any school disco memories, any stories you'd like to share, then send those in to us as well. And any pictures that you might have, some yeah. embarrassing pictures of you in the 90s, um, getting ready for your school discos or whatever. <laughs> or then... the 80s, if you're a wee bit older. I, we don't discriminate. <laughs> uh, 80s, 90s, noughties. Yours, yours would be the noughties, wouldn't they? Well, my school disco started in 95. So. You went to your first school disco when you were five? Yeah, primary one. Whoa. Well, I guess it was more a day party. Uh, I first, don't remember those. The I first never had those. Evening disco was pro probably like 98 and 99. Right, yeah. okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so um, send in some embarrassing stories and photos. And uh, the other thing we want you to do is let us know your favourite song. Oh, yeah, from that. From that. From your disco. Yeah. From not, your, not, not from today. Not from now. Not like for, oh, I really, write, really like Ed Sheeran or <laughs> like Lewis Fair yeah that's fine yeah yeah oh, i'm a big lewis fan yeah that's fine that's great um but no from your school discos what's what's your favorite retro school disco what song? made you bust out those moves on the dance floor at your school disco <laughs> absolutely and we'll uh we'll try and put a little chart together yeah of all the favorites uh That'd if we can as well so we'll have a number one and number two <laughs> me and you yeah me and you my <laughs> opinion your opinion i'll be first because i'm more important no so please yeah get in touch <laughs> If you want to. Yeah, that's great. So how can they get in touch, Carol? Well, we've got our Instagram and our Facebook, which are both at Husey's Musings. Um, we've got our email address if you want it to, if it's a bit longer or you want it to be a bit more private, the which is thehuesespodcast at gmail.com. Yep. You and can, we've got our website. You can also go to our website. Uh, we've got a message board up there uh, for when the website goes live. And that's hughesatmusings.com. Sure is. Yeah, and that's where you can find all of our pictures of our what's on our play, our favourite season. We'll yeah, we've got a lot of blog posts up there as well. They'll be yeah. all up there as well. So uh, do check that out when you get the chance yeah. as well. As John says, let's share some information, have a conversation. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, that's all we've got time for this week, Carol. Um, so thanks very much. Yeah, thanks for listening. I'll see you next week, Carol. <laughs> yeah, I won't, won't see you till next week. That's it, that's it. We're just going to separate and then that way, that way we've got something to talk about. Yeah, we'll just be silent the rest of the week. That's it, yep. We'll just save it all. I'll silently put that meal in front of you. Good. <laughs> At least you're still cooking for me. So, thanks very much, guys. So, uh, we'll see you soon. Chat to you next week. Bye! Bye.